Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. I had a request to add a second PCA9685 to a video that I already made. And I thought this could make an interesting video because I don't just have to send the channel now because a PCA9685 can control 16 different pulse modulated ports, but I also have to send a board variable. So I thought it might be fun to take the old project and add something to the string so that we can check for another a bit of data in the string that comes from the connection to the Arduino to control something else. What I have is I have this uh, Nano. I'm going to use a Nano for this project. And I have this, this USB to serial converter tied to pins 2 and 3 of the Nano to use the software serial port so that I can use debug mode on the Nexion and I don't have to use an actual Nexion display for this. And then I'm using the SDA and SCL outputs out of the Nano, A4 and A5, and I'm jumping them over to this, to the first PC, PCA board, and then we're going to jump it around to the other one. I'm going to use the fourth output on the second one, and you can see that I have the address pins soldered so that this one is different from the one on this side, which I'm going to use the first output on, and I haven't soldered any of those. So the first address is going to be 40, and then the second one will be 41. In other words, this one will be 40 and the next one over here, and this one over here will be 41. We're going to use it to control these two servo motors. And this is where we left the uh, connection when I was finished with the last one. We were controlling channel 1 and channel 4 on a single board, and now we're going to switch that out. So this channel 1 is going to go to board 1. I think I'm going to make a change in the in the display for that so that it makes it apparent what we're doing and and this one over here is going to be board 2. Hopefully this will just make it a little more clear. The other thing I want to do is when I was moving these sliders if you go to the touch release here and the touch move in the touch move I was updating this number field below each one I was doing it on the move but not on the release and we, I noticed that when you release it you still move it a little bit and it didn't seem to get it quite right so I'm going to copy this and put it on the touch release also so that way this number field at the bottom updates the same. And do the same down here or on this one. Okay, so now up on the slider here, we have to denote that we're sending board 1 versus board 2. We currently send 8 characters because we send the channel 0, 1, and we send a text field down here. We convert a value of this HO to a text field that we can send over the serial port, but we make it 4 characters long. That's what that comma 4 is. You can see here that it's the length. So we're, we're locking it into four characters. And then we're combining it to the channel. So this channel text down here, we set it to channel 0, 1. We convert the value of this slider and store it in the value variable here. And then we combine channel text with the value. And that's what gives us our eight characters that we're sending over. Well, in order to keep everything in groups of four, I'm going to send the board as a four character addition. So right before the channel, we're going to add a B for board and 001 because this is board one. And we'll want to do that on the touch move too. And then we'll go down here and we're going to add B002. And we'll do that in both spots.
So this way when we send the data down here, print s, we're, we're sending the board value, we're sending the channel number, and we're sending the value of the slider itself. We do have one problem though because now we're sending 12 characters. If you look at the channel the way I had it set before, it was only the max length was 8. Now we have to change that to 12. So I'll run this in debug. Now you'll be able to see down here, if I change this to string, what we send. So when I click on it, we're sending board 001, channel 1, and then the value 1973. If I go down here, it's board 002, channel 4, and 0502. And I, we made it four characters to accommodate for larger values, but we've locked it in, so it'll always be four characters. And the Arduino can convert the string to, to an integer, so it should work just fine. So now we know we have a good string and we're sending it to the Arduino. We're going to move over to the Arduino next. That's really all we needed to do in this in the next one. Now whenever I'm doing something with I squared C's, I like to verify that I have the address correctly. Now what I believe the addresses are in hex is 40 and then device number 2 will be 41 or the I squared C port value will be 40 and 41. But if you run this little program here, this I squared C scanner, it lets you know what, what the Arduino is seeing on the I squared C bus. It's a pretty simple code. We just have, we just set up a variable device address and we set it from 1 to 128. And then we just, we just pull, we just send it out. We start the transmission to that device address 1 through 128. So we'll do this 128 times. And if we get a reply code equal to 0, then we know that it device is fine. If we get a reply code other than 0, then we know that it's an error. And in this case, we're just going to look for that device right here if it's zero. And we're not going to print out anything else. We could else, we could print out what the error code is or we could find some information about it. But in this case we're just looking for the devices that report back as as good or give us a error code of zero or a reply code of zero. I'm going to upload this to the Arduino and you'll see what I mean. Now in my serial monitor I'm getting 64, 65, and 112. The only numbers we're concerned with are 64 and 65, and that equates to a hex variable of 40 and 41. And when I'm dealing with the addresses on an I2C C bus, I prefer to deal in hex. I don't know why that is, it's just a little quirk that I have. So now we're going to switch over to the Arduino code to control the PCA devices. Now this is the code where we left off in the last video. And I'll try to remember to put a link in the upper right to that video if you haven't seen it, because I'm not going to go over every part of it at this point. I'm pretty much just going to assume that you've seen that video. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete or comment out the wire portions, the portions that send data to control the servos, because we know we've changed the way the string is coming from the next one, and it's not going to work anyway. So I'm going to comment those out, and then we'll just run the Arduino in a way so you can see what's what I have coming out the serial monitor. And then up here as we bring the data in through our DFD string right here, we'll parse it through it and we'll print out the data. So we're going to print out the time, we're going to print out the DFD, the data that we've collected, and in this case since it's greater than 7 we're only going to be looking for an 8 character string even though we're sending a 12. So I want to just show you how that works. So I'm going to run this and show you it in the serial monitor. So as we adjust this slider, you can see that we got B001 and the channel 01. But we're only looking for eight characters right now in the Arduino. So that means that the value 1708 is still sitting in the buffer and it's only four characters long. So when I click something else, it'll publish or it will print out that value and then it's going to print out the rest of the string that I click on. So this is kind of interesting. So as I click on it, you can see now it printed out that value of 1708. It printed out the board again, but since the connection sent eight more characters, the channel and the value again, it printed it out in two. It, it, it looked like it got two things from the connection instead of one. So the first time you click down here, which we get our B2, which is nice, and our channel 4, we don't get this 2105 until we click again. 
and then we get the 2105, but then we get the B2 again, channel 4, and then the value. So we have to alter the Arduino so it's looking for 12 characters instead of 8. And then we'll also have to look at the values that it's collecting. Because we know that the time is not 0. The time when it sent this B2 channel 04 should have been 2005 but it was zero, and even down here it's zero. So as we parse through the data, something's wrong there too. So we'll need to adjust the Arduino in a couple different ways. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this string here so that it's 11 instead of 7. So if the DFD, the data that we're collecting on our serial line coming in from the next gen, exceeds 11 characters or hits that 12th, then we're going to do something with it. And the first thing we're going to do is just print it. But now we're collecting a board along with the channel. So we're going to add that code in here too. So we're going to create an integer and we're going to call it board so we know that it's going to store that value. And then we're going to go into the substring of it. And the substring for this long one here, this is the example I put on there. The first character we're going to be looking for is zero base, so it's going to be this zero, zero, 001. And so it's going to start at 1, but then it's the second character isn't, isn't zero base, so it'll be the fourth character. So we're going to collect that 1, and we're going to store it in board. But then we need to convert it, because we know our address is 40 and 41, and probably go on 42, 43, 44, and that way in hex. So we're going to add that whatever we collect, in this case 1, to a hex value of 3F, which will make it 40. And then when we collect it from the other board and it's B002, it's going to add 2 to 3F and it will get a board value of 42. And then we're going to print that out. And we're going to print it out in hex. Then the next thing we're going to have to collect is the off time. But now we know it's not the 4 to 8 because it's this time at the end. So it's going to be a higher value. This is 4 or 3 in 0 base, and this would be 7. So we're looking at 8 through 11, or 8 through 12. So now we'll get the substring of 8 through 12 and get that 4,095, or whatever it is at that time. And that takes care of the board and the time that we have the device off. Our next thing is, is the channel itself. And we get that down here. In this case, we're going to look at 6 through 8. Right here, this is 0, 1. And then we're going to print that out too. So just to make sure we're collecting the data right, I'm going to upload this and give it a test. So I'm going to clear this out. And now when we click this, it should give us all 12 characters. The board is 40, because it's going to take 1 and make it 40. The time is 1973 out here. If we go back to here, time is 377. And see it's an integer. It gets rid of that zero, which is nice. And the channel is six. I didn't go over the channels in that. I'll go back when we close this out. But let's make sure that board two comes through and we see a board of 41. In this case, the board is 41. The value is 23, 15. And our channel is 18. Let's go all the way back to here. And we have a much lower 300 is our value. And you can see that they match up. We'll go back to the code now. So when we send channel 1, what we do is we multiply that channel number by 4 and add 2. So 2 times 4 is 8, 10, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. And that's how you get to that channel, the number that the PCA device understands. We have to go up to the setup to before we can uncomment out these wire statements. Up here in the setup, when we initialize the PCA device, in the original video, all we had was one PCA device, and it was set at address 40. So all we had to do was initialize 40, but now we also have to initialize the device 41. So we'll copy this set of lines, and we'll paste them down here. And then we'll just change this to 1. Now we know that when we run through the setup, we're initializing that second board. And now we'll go back down to where we had commented out those wire lines before. 
and we'll just uncomment them. And the off time, that's the same because we're collecting it. We're collecting it in a different location, but the variable is the same. And the channel is the same. But here where we do the begin transmission, where we select the board that we're going to, it's not always going to be 40. And that's why we created that board variable. So now all we have to do is pop that into there. And now we should begin the transmission to the proper board. We should write the channel. And we should write the time that that we are turning the motor off. So in other words, when the number goes when the number gets larger, the motor should spin slower. Or if that was a DC motor, in the case of a servo, it'll move one way or the other, so it won't really matter. We're going to upload this and give it a test. And you can see the two servos right here. Now as I adjust this, they should change. Now when I go to the other one, it should change. And so it works just as we would expect. Now we'll just do a quick review. In the Arduino, all we did was we started looking for four more characters. They were added to the front of the string, but they were just four characters, so we had to change the, the length of the string we were looking for. And then we just had to change how we were parsing the data. We used substring to collect the information from the string. And that works really nice if you're sending a set size string from the nection. If you're not sending an absolutely set size string from the nection, you could still use the B for the board, the CH for the channel, and then you'd have to do something else for the time. And then you could parse your data based upon looking for those certain things in the string itself. But for this case, we just went with a set size string. And then on the nection itself, all we had to do was add this B001 to the front of the string that we send. So if I wanted to have more than one channel on board one, I could have this one down here be channel five, let's say, on board one. All I'd have to do is click on it, and instead of it saying board two, channel four, I would just change this B001 and then channel 05 and that's all I'd have to do. The Arduino already would interpret that as board one, channel five. You could even just have one slider and you could do a drop down to select the channel number you wanted. And then you could populate this based upon that drop down box or a, or a number field that you enter yourself. But just by changing this text up here, this channel text, you can manipulate what board you're going to and what channel you're going to. And then the rest of it would be the same. You just collect the value of the slider and append it to the end and send it to the Arduino. And the way we have the Arduino configured, it will just parse through that data and control the proper channel. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.